I wanted to convert my Harbor Freight 90 amp AC welder to DC to reduce spatter and try to make better welds. I wanted to use a 200 amp rectifier to ensure the rectifier itself would not burn out. I wanted to make sure there was a heat sink of some kind on the rectifier, also to help keep it from overheating and burning out. I wanted to do all this at minimal cost. I happened to have enough junk lying around, so the only part I actually needed to buy was the 200 amp rectifier. This rectifier cost $20 from Amazon. The link is below. While you're checking the link out, will you please hit the subscribe button? A bridge rectifier converts the normal alternating voltage output of the Harbor Freight welter to direct current. The bridge rectifier has four internal diodes that do this job. In this diagram, there is a schematic of the bridge rectifier on the upper left. AC current enters the rectifier as a sine wave with positive and negative voltage. The diodes in the rectifier block the voltage in the negative direction, leaving only the positive direct current voltage as the output. The curves on the right show the input and output voltage. The top diagram shows the unmodified AC input voltage alternating from positive to negative. The bottom diagram shows that the negative voltage has been totally removed, which is the black wave. Note that while the current is now direct current, there is still some variation in it. To achieve the ideal welding effect, the DC current that is output should have no variation at all, just like the output from a battery. The red line, which is the ideal line, shows what the voltage would look like under ideal circumstances. However, to achieve this type of direct current, more circuitry is required. However, just the addition of the single bridge rectifier can make a big difference in weld quality, and putting additional expensive parts into this welder is like putting lipstick on a pig. Since I wanted a big rectifier and a big heat sink, the fit inside the case was pretty close. I didn't want to have to reduce the size of the heat sink. Also, I didn't want to have to move the fan to avoid disrupting the airflow, but it ended up being necessary to move the fan about one half inch to the side. The rectifier has a smooth surface on one side that is meant to sit up against a heat dissipator, like my CPU heat sink. Sometimes people convert these welders by simply screwing the rectifier to one of the sheet metal sides of the welder. I wanted to be sure to use some kind of heat sink to dissipate as much heat as possible. I did a lot of test fitting before drilling any holes. I used some big sheet metal screws to mount one side of the rectifier to the heat sink. On the other side of the rectifier, I bent some machine screws and mounted them with some adjustable nuts to finish clamping the rectifier tightly to the heat sink. Before I clamped it together for the last time, I cleaned off the mating surfaces with acetone. I then applied thermal grease between the heat sink and the rectifier. It was a good, solid, tight fit. I attached two aluminum mounting brackets to the solid sides of the heat sink. I mounted it on the upper part of the case, right under the spool. I used two of the screws and nuts that came with the rectifier to mount it. There was no interference with the spool. The wire in my unit was 10 millimeters squared in area. That works out to 8 gauge wire. I had an old set of cheap battery jumper cables that happened to be 8 gauge wire. I cut off enough jumper cable to make four wire lengths I needed. I shortened the jumper cable so they still work. They're just 7 feet long now instead of 12 feet long. To make the cable terminals, I used some old 1 4 inch copper tubing cut into pieces about 1 and 1 8 inches long. I flattened one end in a vise, then hammered the flat end out just a little flatter and a little wider. I drilled the appropriate sized hole in the flattened end. The 8 gauge jumper cable almost fits into the homemade terminals. However, if you ream out and expand the open end of the tubing with some needle nose pliers, the jumper cable slips in perfectly. I put some shrink tubing over the cable. I could not locate the expensive crimping tool from my dad's shop that had not been used in years, so I just soldered the terminal zone using a propane torch and rosin core solder. I had some flux, so I used that too. For the splices to the AC lines, you can use the same copper tubing, but flare both ends of the piece of tubing to make the connections fit neatly before soldering. 
Since voltage is now exposed to the terminals on the rectifier, I mounted a piece of plexiglass with a warning label over the rectifier terminals. I also put a label on the top stating that the welder has been modified to use DC current in case anyone else ends up with this welder. I ran a 20 second test after the conversion was done. I am certainly no welder, but I believe the poor penetration and huge amount of splatter with the stock welder has been greatly rectified. Now maybe I can try to learn how to use this welder. Including the $20 conversion, I think the $100 I spent on this welder will be worthwhile. Thanks for watching my video.